Welcome to Callaway Talks. I'm your host, Dave Neville, a.k.a. Yo D. Nevs, joined today by the good doctor, Alan Hocknow. It feels like you have been in the, the chair a lot, <laughs> a lot lately. We've been doing a bunch of these. Yeah, we've been busy uh, launching product, uh, and this is uh, this is a great example of stuff that uh, that we're super proud of, so I can't wait to tell everybody about it. Yeah, so we've had um, a lot of, I would say, Super game improvement mm-hmm. offerings uh, lately. We had the Birth of B21 lineup. We had the the Reva lineup, the whole women's lineup, the Mac Daddy CB yep. uh, wedge, which you were a part of as well. And I hear from a lot of my buddies, my low handicap friends are saying, what What do you have Where's for us? Love, right? Where's the love? And they've been <laughs> waiting a while because this is, you know, where I was accused of oh, launching so many irons. This is a three-year life cycle yeah. for these new better player irons that we're about to talk about. About. And uh, this is for the best of the best. This is the top of the pyramid here, That's Doc. Right. That's right. This is the stuff that we take our time to really get a lot of feedback from the best players in the game, elite amateurs, obviously tour players as well, very influential over the decisions that we're making here. And we're looking at how uh, the better player game is evolving over time. You know, the way that the game is being played at the most elite levels is changing. Uh, coaching is changing. Uh, the golf balls are uh, a factor in all of that as well. Uh, so uh, a a great project to be involved in how to blend technology with the demands of the best players in the game. So we have three new products to talk about, the X-Forge CB, the X-Forge UT, the Utility Iron, and the Apex MB uh, as right. well. And you've brought a ton of technology and new features to the these products. So I want to dig right in. I want to start with the X-Forge CB. And this one is really a- an interesting one because I would say this category, this this kind of CB category, it tends to not have a lot of technology. Yeah. And we're Callaway, you know, you're mm-hmm. heading up the, the R&D, and we know with uh, Chip Brewer, that's not going to fly. So we have brought a ton of technology uh, now, but I, I think the challenge for you, and, and maybe you can talk about this a little bit, is balancing making a club for the best players in the world and mm-hmm. really good amateurs with bringing a lot of new technology to the category. Yeah, you're right. So uh, traditionally, this would be a single piece forging. Mm-hmm. And for that, there's a certain expectation about the shape and size of this iron, uh, things to do with uh, sole width primarily, uh, top line width, blade size, offset, leading edge shape. Um, so you've got to capture all of those things from a, from a player expectation and performance point of view. But once you have uh, that basic envelope of, of the head, it's a question of like, what is the right form of technology to put in there to really benefit the, the better players in the game? Uh, so while they do make better contact than most of us more consistently uh, near the center of the face, um, and, and with attack angles into the ball that are uh, preferential for, for controlling ball flight, we can still help them in various ways. You know, in the long part of the game, uh, they still uh, prefer assistance in launching the ball more consistently with consistent spin rates, maybe a bit of a speed advantage, but maybe not too much of one as well. And in the shorter part of the game, clearly a very high priority on spin consistency and and delivering that flight consistency, hitting their windows in, in the most exacting part of the game. So it's about formatting the choices of technology usage consistent with uh, with those demands. And we're going to dig into all the technology of this CB iron, but first of all, we got to take a look at these things. Yeah. And it, they're, they're absolutely gorgeous, but it's a different look for us. I would mm-hmm. say it's almost an industrial uh, type of, uh, of, of look. Um, and it's a now a hollow body construction. Right. So yeah. you talked about going from single piece now to hollow body. Um, before we dig into, look at these gorgeous uh, mm-hmm. irons right there. Nice work from the design team and Scott and his team um, as well. But before we dig into the, the tungsten, which is pretty obvious on, on the back there, Talk about hollow body yeah. construction and what's the difference there? Maybe what's the uh, advantages and, and why you would go with that? Yeah, certainly. So we said that more traditionally, this would be a single piece forging. Well, when you have that limitation, there's only so much you can do about moving weight around inside the design in this relatively small form factor of shape um, in order to improve performance. So uh, by 
taking the iron apart and building it in multiple pieces is essentially what we've done here. We allow ourselves access to essentially the inside of the head. And when we do that, we can uh, do more in terms of introducing second materials for weighting purposes or designing the face more exactly for certain elements of the performance as well. When we put them all together, the idea though is that uh, the feel uh, is indistinguishable from that of a single piece forged iron. And that's what we've achieved here. We've got the idea that we can take the iron apart during construction to put other things in there, other technology to create advantage. But when we put it all together and present the final iron, it's equivalent to uh, the feel of a single piece forging. What I'm excited about is I feel like you're really elevating this whole category here mm. with what you're doing. And let's talk about the, the tech, the tungsten that's in there. Maybe start with the internal tungsten and then we'll get to the kind of yeah. obvious uh, <laughs> external tungsten. We'll talk about what's the purpose of, of each one here. Yeah, the two pieces work in tandem with one another. The one you can't see is very much in the toe side of the iron. And its uh, primary purpose is to draw the center of gravity into the, the center of the score line. So to produce a very neutral characteristic for the iron. That's a great place to start from if you want uh, consistency of speed and spin when uh, players make marginal misses left or right or up or down on the face. Uh, so uh, the first piece of tungsten is there to center the center of gravity on the center of the score lines. Now the second piece, the one that you can see uh, more of obviously from the back. I think is, you've got it right there. I do right? have it yeah. right here. Um, it has uh, two functions. One is to draw the center of gravity towards the rear of the head, so further away from, from the face. That gives us uh, opportunities in center of gravity position that are beneficial for launch angle, primarily in the longer and mid irons of the set. And then the second function that this uh, piece of tungsten also has is the ability uh, to configure the iron specific to the build needs of of different players in a more exacting way. So the, this uh, piece will be available in a light, medium and heavy weight range. And that allows us uh, to uh, accommodate uh, length or swing weight uh, needs of different players much more exactly than we have done in the past. So it's kind of a double function. It helps you with that CG position, getting it low, yep. but also then from a fitting and build standpoint, that's really important as well. So I'm not sure if everybody knows, but in the past, at least out on tour, we had these light heads and yes. we had heavy heads and we kind of had the the medium or the, or the normal heads to help dial in the swing weight. But from an inventory standpoint, that's a challenge. Yes. So so I think you've made a lot of friends in the tour department now with this <laughs> this new design as well. Yeah, I think that. And then we know that an awful lot of these uh, clubs, uh, because they're targeted at more advanced players, will be sold uh, through customs and, and fitting processes where people will have maybe long-standing preferences for length or swing weight or shaft type, grip type, and we can accommodate that a lot better uh, using this technique than we have done in the past. Yeah, so let's be clear, like this this isn't something that we want consumers messing with. No. So I think if you look at these pictures, you see the little pinhole uh, in the wrench. So your normal kind of driver wrench is not gonna is, work on, on these. That's correct. We have a, a light, a medium, and heavy. So we have a 12 gram, a 17 gram, and a 22 gram, which really helps us to, yeah. to get those exact builds, dialing the swing weights. And I know that's something that our whole operations team has been working hard on is, mm. is being world-class in terms of our builds and getting these yeah. dialed in and yeah. even getting them built quickly with, with really, really high quality. Yeah, that's right. There's been an enormous initiative in improving uh, quality in terms of the, the tolerance of all of the components. So uh, the weight tolerance that, that we achieve in the heads as, as they are finished, uh, the tolerances that we have in terms of build uh, specifications for swing weight, for length, uh, all of those sorts of things. We're, we're tighter now than we've ever been, and I think we're, we're world-class in that regard. Uh, and this uh, element of the design, the tungsten weighting, uh, is consistent with that thought process in delivering the highest quality, tightest tolerance uh, clubs for the best players in the game. So I know I got all my my geek club friends out there are going to be DMing me about how do they get <laughs> the weight kits for this thing. It ain't going to happen. Don't even ask <laughs> about it. Uh, we're going to build them in the in the factory to the specifications, to the swing weights that you're, you're fit into yeah. using the existing weights. Don't try to hit them without the weight, the tungsten weight in the back. That bad would idea. Be bad, <laughs> bad, bad uh, idea there as well. I also want to talk about um, the face plate mm. versus a face cup versus a single piece. Can you walk through the spectrum of what each of these do in terms of the performance, the speed, the consistency, all of that? Because I know a lot of people have questions about that. Yeah, uh, that's right. So at 
uh, each end of the spectrum, at the low speed, let's say, end of the spectrum, you have the, the solid uh, single-piece uh, forged cavity back iron. Uh, and at the high end of the speed spectrum, you have the face cut performance. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, the, the better players in the game are not necessarily the ones looking for uh, out and out the most distance uh, generated by uh, the ball speed advantage from, from a face cut. Um, uh, but nor are they looking for no help either. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea of the middle ground in between is where the tour tuned face plate comes in. So we can uh, generate some of the speed advantages that you would get from a face cup, uh, but not as, as extreme as that. That seems to be a, a place where better players are comfortable with, with an advantage uh, without uh, getting outside of their, their zone about where they would expect to hit distances for particular irons very consistently. So, you know, a high priority on speed consistency and spin consistency, launch angle consistency from a tour tuned faceplate. Uh, and, and we feel that that's the right ground to have for this better player club. A fitter asks me, you know, how far do you want to hit your seven iron? I say, as far as possible. As far as right. yeah. yeah. They ask a tour player that, they tell them exactly. It might be 182 yeah. yards or it might be 182.5 yards or yeah. something like that. They really, they want to have that consistency. Yeah, and I think uh, maybe uh, general golfers don't have an appreciation for just the exacting kind <laughs> of uh, expectations that some of the tour players have. Um, not just as well on their full uh, full swing shots, but their partial or off speed shots. There's an awful lot of attention paid to the performance of clubs uh, when they're not sitting in the fairway on their exact number to a pin. They've got to be able to hit precise shots when they're not on their full shot numbers out in the fairway. So Let, let's take a look at the components. Also, we've got for our steel shaft the Project X IO. So all new lineup from Project X IO being individually optimized, and then the MMT from Mitsubishi, so um, a, a great kind of player's graphite uh, iron there, mm. so for the better players. And any of our no upcharge shafts are available. There's no upcharge for graphite, steel, whatever you want to get. It's all in, included there. And then the grip, the Golf Pride Z grip um, also. And then if we bring up um, the loft package here, um, Doc, the you know, the lofts are really geared towards that, that better player. Yeah. So, you know, yep. not super strong in terms of the lofts, pitching wedge at 45 degrees, seven iron at, at 33. Correct. And then you look at the, the offsets there um, also. So everything geared really to that, that better player here. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic kind of arrangement of uh, expected specifications for shape, size, offset, um, loft, but with the advantages of the technology added in, perhaps uniquely in this uh, part of the category. So already getting uh, incredible feedback on mm. tour, and I know we, we've, we've had these some of these prototypes out there in kind yeah. of a sneaky way for a while, but saw Kevin Kisner putting them in um, yeah. right away, which is interesting when I when I think about Kiz because he was an Apex Pro guy, mm -hmm. um, and and now he's he's into the the CB. I think it kind of shows some of the technology that you've brought in there that allows him to play the CB. Yeah, now. Uh, Kevin, not known for being a quick switcher from uh, oh, one. My generation of products That's an to understatement. <laughs> Hi, kids. I hope you're watching. <laughs> Love him. But, yeah. uh, but it's maybe a statement about what is uh, what is in it for him in terms of X-Forge CB. Uh, so fantastic that he's uh, taken those up straight away and he's seen advantages. So we look at the timing here. These are, they're already out there. We already begin the fitting and the pre-sale. So you can go out there, you can try them. You can check them out on CallawayGolf.com. We have a whole selector tool, tool as well. But uh, this is going to be an exciting one. I think anytime we're bringing a bunch of technology to mm. a new category. It's always going to be fun to see how, how it goes. Let's move on to the X-Forged utility because when you look at those these two kind of side by side, at least in the pictures, yeah. you see a lot of similarities. Yes. But when you, you set them down and see them in person, there's a lot of differences um, uh, also. So maybe let's start with uh, the, the shaping here yeah. and what's different about the, the sole and the top line and the offset and all that. With yeah, this. so uh, I mean, essentially with the UT, it's all a bit bigger than yeah. the X-Forge CB. So a little more offset, wider sole, longer blade. Um, and that gives us uh, more uh, room with which to do things that help players in the long part of the bag. So uh, at that point, part of the game, uh, advanced players are, are now looking for 
uh, maybe distance advantages a bit more than they would be otherwise. One of the reasons for switching to a, a UT over, say, a regular three iron is uh, to get a, an improvement in the consistency of launch angle or maybe launch it a little higher uh, while retaining speed. Uh, so the search for speed is a, is a little uh, more pronounced in these irons. And for that, instead of having the tour tuned uh, face plate, we actually move to a face cup, start to deliver that uh, high launching, maybe slightly lower spinning, faster ball flight for these uh, utility irons. Uh, a distance advantage is definitely uh, available from them. And you're using AI now, so we have the flash That's face right. cup in there. Unique, uh, we have three models, so 18, 21, and 24. And that, that flash face cup is going to be unique for each of those heads, right? Yeah, and, and this is a, a particular uh, interesting project in terms of the use of AI. Uh, you know, I've said there's more of a priority on speed than there would be in the other irons, but we don't want to give up at all on, on spin consistency and speed con consistency. If these irons were considered long but uh, hard to control, we would have missed our mark because this player still wants to hit these uh these these irons uh, taking on shots that still demand a great degree of precision, whether that's long par threes or or trying to get uh, tucked pins from well over 200 yards. That's the sort of shot that they're taking on with these. Uh, so they need that spin and speed consistency. So you've got basically all of our best tech in there. We've got multi-material construction. We've got the hollow body. You've got the flash face cup. And then you also put the urethane microspheres in there uh, yeah. for that kind of a sound and feel. That's right. It talk about how that kind of works with the, the face cup. It seems very important that when you have the face cup that you have the urethane yeah, in there. Yeah, I think the, the two have really become uh, things that go together in the Callaway technology suite, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime that you have a face cup, you've got a lot of energy in the face that makes the head want to vibrate after impact with a golf ball. And that leads usually to, to poor sound, poor feel. So to damp out those vibrations, we do inject the head with the urethane microspheres and that, that uh, does improve the, the sound and the feel, makes it more consistent with that of the single piece forging that we're going for uh, without taking away any of the speed benefit that you get from the face cup. So a very versatile, very important part of the Callaway technology uh, makeup. And then you were mentioning before, we can see in this gorgeous picture here, we have the MIM tungsten, the external MIM tungsten. So we yeah. have 12, 17, and 22, and we'll be able to dial in all the swing weights uh, there. But also, what do you expect to see maybe from some combo sets with the CB here? Yeah, I think that's very possible. You know, the even uh, the idea of going up to the 24 in, in a set with the CB, they're meant to be very compatible. Uh, they have the the sort of set makeups of uh, some of the better players in the game in mind. A lot of observations that we've made of uh, better amateurs with uh, these types of clubs forming the lower part of their set. And certainly um, some of our tour players, uh, particularly when they get into the, the drier, faster conditions uh, or, the, or the wind, are, are loving uh, inserting these for the right tournament at the right time. Yeah, we got to talk about the tour aspect of this because I, I, I saw already a bunch of guys have put it in. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, Mark Leishman putting it in um, right away. What is it about a utility iron on tour that seems to be very trendy out there uh, right now. <laughs> well, I think there's one part of it that visually is very compatible with the irons in their set. So uh, the, the blade shape and size, the, the offset, the flat face, uh, are all very consistent with irons versus the transition to hybrids where you get quite a different look and uh, you introduce bulge and roll effects mm. uh, because the center of gravity is further back from the face. Um, some some players are, are just uh, more comfortable looking at something iron-like. They feel they put their iron swing on it versus a, a more sweeping motion maybe that they would be used to with fairway woods. Uh, and for that, they, they can flight the ball into a certain window that's very familiar with them, very predictable as well, I think. It seems like for that better player, kind of that stinger shot that you, yeah, that you see you. out there, mm -hmm. um, it, I don't think with the hybrid that's that possible the way that it, it jumps up. In, no, I don't in, in think you see players go for that shot quite as confidently with anything but an iron-like shape. Yeah, Yeah. so it really is an interesting option for the better player. Let's look at the, the components here. So I think we've stepped it up here also on the on the shafts. We have the all-new Project XU, which I believe is the first ever dedicated utility shaft that's out there. And then in terms of the graphite, the Project X hazardous smoke, um, and that's a, you know, a great heavyweight graphite shaft. 
shaft there uh, also. And then the Golf Pride Z grip um, and tons of different options, of course, that we have uh, out there for no upcharge, but really premium components. We're launching this at the same time as as the CB and the tour uh, reception on these have been just just outstanding so far. So yeah, we're, we're really excited to get those out there. And uh, I think you're right. The, there's been a, a strong response uh, from that type of player. And we expect that uh, in the commercial world as well. So we have one more iron to talk about here. <laughs> and it's, as Joel Rump would say, the creme de la creme, <laughs> the, the, the pinnacle, um, the Apex MB. It's, it's almost like... It, Every company has an MB, but it's sort of like yeah. a, it's it, it's a statement iron, you know, <laughs> is, don't, don't you think? It is. I think if you can genuinely play one of these irons, then you are a golfer with a capital G. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or you have a tour card. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, That's right. There. Um, it, it's interesting um, with the with the Apex MB, the, the shaping and the look of it is so important. We look at these gorgeous um, uh, pictures here, but the top line is so mm -hmm. important the soul, the way that you have the interaction uh, with, with the turf, but yeah. you also, you can't mess it up from the previous generation. No, that, that's right. That's why we, we do take a fair amount of time to make sure that we have um, a, a consensus around the feedback uh, from uh, the prior generation, from a, a variety of uh, tour player caliber and elite amateur caliber players, uh, because each one of them has their own sort of thoughts about what would be uh, perfect in the mm -hmm. next generation. And sometimes, to your point, we're talking about very small differences. Uh, and here we've made some small differences in terms of the progression of blade length through the set, um, the way that bounce is treated through the set, all represent sort of the, the more modern thoughts uh, coming back to us from, from the best players in the game. Um, and, you know, to to some people's eye, they, they might not look any different at all, but mm -hmm. there there are some uh, subtle changes there. Maybe the way that the, the hosel interacts with the blade in the par area, there are subtle effects there too. So uh, we're, we're taking all of that into account um, so that we have the the envelope of the, the shape just right for every iron in the set. Um, and where we talk about, you know, designing faces for every iron in the set, maybe in other irons here, um, here the shape is really the king. And uh, we're, we're paying a lot of attention to that. But of course, in the pictures, you can see something else that's happened. Yeah, too. <laughs> and I want to talk about that in one, in one second, because that's pretty obvious from, from the pictures. <laughs> but also the, the 20 V groove, because we do mm. get a lot of questions about this. And yeah. I think one of the goals of the MB has got to be no flyers, right? right, um, right. And that's super important to this type of, of player. How does that, that 20 V groove uh, help help with that? Yeah, we're, so we're wanting to make sure that we've got the, the right uh, characteristics for, for shots, particularly coming out of light rough or wet rough. Um, that's where you'll see the flyer characteristic the most. And most of the players uh, that we're designing these clubs for don't want that. Yes. Um, so it's up to us to make sure that we have sufficient spin. The flyer is created by having insufficient spin coming out of those conditions. So the 20 degree V-shaped groove is there, uh, developed through a lot of uh, testing with better players in those conditions uh, to be the, the, the best of, uh, of the breed in terms of uh, getting a flight that still is uh, sporty enough coming out of the rough. You don't want to lose distance unnecessarily. Uh, but one which reacts with the green in a predictable, controllable manner. I think it's interesting with our, our jaws wedges in the lower loss, we also use the 20V there. So yeah. you get a very good blend into the, the wedges also. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing that we got to talk about there, a little obvious on the back, um, mm -hmm. you see this this weight screw. Um, and I know uh, some of my friends are always out there looking at spy shots, even you know, yes. several months ago, were sending me pictures and say, what is this? I yep. think they spotted it in maybe Patrick Rogers' bag or, okay. or something like that. Yep. Um, and it was out there testing. So what is the purpose of having this kind of MIMS weight screw on, mm -hmm. the, on the back of the, the iron? Yeah, something we haven't had before. For, but it's an ability for us to uh, adapt the the weight of the head for these uh, best players in the game in a location that is center of gravity neutral. So um, we know that these players are some of the most sensitive. Uh, the the uh, sweet spot, if you like, isn't that large compared to other irons on one of these uh, uh, muscle backs. So we have to be precise and uh, adapting the the weight of the head to the different build requirements for different players uh, by putting 
making uh, weight changes in a position directly uh, behind the center of the face there is an advantage in the sort of precision build here. So uh, that's what we're going to make available to, to those who are um, available on tour and to those who are uh, getting this club through customs. Yeah, so no longer do we have the light head and the, and the heavy head. Mm -hmm. We have 4 gram, 8 gram, and 12 gram increments so we can really help dial in uh, the yeah. swing weights. Um, and like you said, these are custom only. So typically I'd be showing a stock shaft uh, here. Yes. There is no stock shaft. Get whatever you want. Make sure you're getting fitted into it. And I would make sure that you're working with the fitter to get the appropriate swing weight. You know, yes. some players are very very, very sensitive to that. Yeah, for certain. You know, um, I think we're moving into an, uh, an era more so where uh, the there isn't a really a standard length progression for tour players anymore. They're they're learning how to ad adapt their irons differently at different parts in the set, and and this is one way of us from a design perspective responding to that. And I expect as fittings become uh, more and more uh, advanced in the in the consumer world, then that will happen uh, for regular golfers too. Same message we had on the Mim Tungsten weight. We don't want people messing with these weights right. in the back. Don't play them without the the weights Please. in there. Or, you yeah. know, <laughs> don't try to find a wrench that takes them out. Don't not not a challenge, um, but that just absolutely gorgeous, beautiful uh, progression. So you guys did a, a phenomenal job, and um, I've, I I got to just last question, sort of ask about getting all of these products over the finish line. I know we've talked about it a few times before, mm -hmm. but we've launched a lot of products uh, this year and we it have. has been a, a massive, massive challenge for yeah, you guys. Uh, certainly uh, making sure that the, the designs were, were ready on time and that uh, the prototypes lived up to the, the potential that we knew that they could have. Um, a lot of testing needed to be done in ways that were uh, different than we would normally manage. And, and huge hats off to our engineering team and global operations team for all of the work that would normally involve significant uh, travel, almost commuter-like travel to, yes. to our supply partners that hasn't been possible. And then actually still delivering the, the parts in the numbers at the quality that is required. A fantastic uh, effort by them too. Expect to see these out on tour in a big way. Uh, expect to see these with the fitters. Go out to CallawayGolf.com. You can find out more. You can look at more of these, these gorgeous pictures uh, of these irons. Doc, I want to thank you for joining me um, again. I don't know if this is the last Callaway Talks <laughs> or not. I mean, there, uh, who knows what we might be <laughs> launching between now and, and, the, and the end of the year. But an amazing achievement from you, from Scott Marinwaring, from Josh, from the entire team. Team, the global operations team, the program management team getting these over the finish line. That's going to do it for us today on Callaway Talks. I want to thank my, my guest, Dr. Alan Hocknell. I want to thank our producers, Sean and Trevor. Thank you guys for helping us out here. And we'll see you next time on Callaway Talks.